Hi y'all, welcome back. Um, so this is part two of Safe Show 9, Gaussian processes. What we're going to talk now is how to do estimation over the parameters of the Gaussian process. And if you recall, what, the only thing that we have that may have some parameters inside is the kernel because the other thing that we have within the, the method is just um, the mean and then the covariances, right? The, the other parameter of the Gaussian, but the mean comes from the data so that is just a straightforward. And then the, the other thing is just the covariance matrices. And these covariance matrices depend on, on this kernel that we, where we decide, right? So that is one of the things that we need to, to optimize here. So let's see the general case, and then we, we can talk about one particular example. Um, before I go forward, in case I forget, remember like there, in the book, there are several examples and several um, uh, discussion about the different kernels that you may use. So it is worth it to go and, and, and read it just to get a broader idea of how these processes look like, okay? So as always, our idea is to do some maximization or optimization in general uh, of um, this marginal, okay? Um, our marginal is just the y given x, but I'm inferring these through my Gaussian process, right? So I will have my f's in the middle, on my f and x over here, and then I will have my p of f, sorry, my p of f given x, df, okay? So I'm marginalizing all the f's outside of this distribution just to get my my prediction over the data, right? And if you remember from the previous part, I'm defining this uh, P of F given X as a Gaussian, right? So that is the, the idea of the, of the Gaussian process. For simplicity, just say, let's just say that um, this is zero mean. And my standard that comes from the kernel. And then my PY given F an x is just the product of all the data. So have the multiplication of i equal one up to n of these normals. So the prediction of y given fi as my mean and some sigma y square. Okay. And now my log of these, as always, the, the one that I want to optimize is Log of p of y given f. Um, sorry, uh, from the marginalized version. Okay, so let's say like I already I already marginalized this, so I know that this is a Gaussian, right? So I will have some log of n of y i. So let, let's do it for all of them. Y and zero k y. And if I apply the log to this, I end up with minus one half of y, ky inverse y minus one half log of ky. Uh, the determinant of this matrix log of the determinant and n half log of two pi. Right, so this part over here is just my data fit. So it's a term that's just feeding the data, right? Using my kernel and the predictions. And this is how complex my model is. So this is the model complexity. So this determinant is just is telling me how complex it will end up with respect to the kernel that I'm using. And this is just a constant value that I'm going to be using, okay? So we can just throw it away. And if we use this, um, the whole idea is to take uh, the partial of this log over here with respect to the parameters, okay? So let's say like I want to just do it with respect to the jth parameter over here. I'm mean, like this parameter corresponds to, to the kernel over here. Um, so I want to take these with respect of py given x, right? And then it's just a matter of uh, doing the derivative over here. So 
these two pi is constant, so I can just uh, zero it out. And then the only terms that have the k are these two. So <clears throat> the first one is just one half of y, and then the k inverse y times its uh, derivative, right? k y with respect of theta j times k y inverse, because it will go it will go down, right? And now I have a k y y, okay, minus one half. So now I need to take the derivative of this log over here. So it is going to be the trace of k y inverse. And again, the partial of ky with respect of this j parameter. So I can group these things over here. So if I apply the trace operation over these, and then I just change the um, its shapes. Oh, sorry, this is transpose. I'm forgetting that. And if I change this parameter over here, I can uh, group them. So if you see, I have this thing over here that it's repeated, right? So let's say like if I call this alpha, then this is uh, alpha transpose times these times alpha. And if I apply the trace over here, I can just uh, cycle it and then just push these to the right such that I can factor it out with respect to these ones and put it inside the trace. So I will end up with the following. I will end up with minus one half of the trace of alpha alpha transpose minus ky inverse, right? Um, times this partial over here. And this is kind of useful because now I just need to know what the shape of ky is and then I can have my, my full form. Now, let's assume, for instance, some uh, really widely used kernel. So consider the square exponential kernel, um, the SE one. They call it SE. So this kernel is just uh, in its simplest form, like this, um, some xp, xq as input, and it has two parameters. It depends on these uh, sigma f and l. So this is, oh, sorry, sigma f. So it's the spread with respect of, of my data and the exponential function of minus one half L square. Sorry, this this wants to be an L <laughs> and XP X minus X, XP minus XQ square over here. Plus my noise in case of having some noise, uh, sigma Y. And some delta function between P, Q, tau A. Just going to add the noise when these are uh, equal in the diagonal, right? So, um, Again, this is called the square exponential because I'm just uh, squaring this difference with respect to, to some exponential. So if you see, it's kind of a Gaussian, just uh, with L as the standard deviation and just centering within the other data point and seeing how far it is spreading out. So if we use this kernel over here, I can compute my, my derivatives, right? So. I can do my ky, and this uh, theta j just each component of my parameter vector, right? So I can, in this case, I have these two parameters that I can optimize with respect to. So I can do that, for instance, if I do it for the sigma f first, what do we have? So it is just this first part over here, right? So it's twice sigma f and the exponential of minus one over two L square and then my difference, right? Cool, and this is just uh, 
zeros out. And then I can do the same thing for the other one, uh, L. So this is a little bit more complex, but still. So uh, it is the derivative of the exponential, right? So here's the exponential again. Let me try to compact this. If not, it won't fit. So x cubed squared over minus 2L squared times uh, the derivative of whatever it is inside, right? So I have a minus minus that is a plus 2 um, sp minus 6q square over here over 2L cube, right? And uh, okay, so this cancel over here, and I will end up with my sigma f square over um, L3 L cube over here uh, times the 6p minus 6q square times the exponential or minus uh, xp minus 6q square over 2l, right? So, yeah. So now you have these two um, gradients, and then you can just plug these back into this particular shape. So now you have your, your vector, you just vectorize this and then just pass it back. If you want, you can compute the, the gradient of these and simplify your, your computations. Um, so yeah, you can estimate, this will give you point estimates of your, of your parameters. If you want, you can also do some uh, Bayesian inference here. Um, and compute some 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 estimate over these. And what you will have is that this p of f given d, uh, you can you you can approximate it as just using samples. So you will have s samples of p of uh, f given d theta s times of p theta s given d and you have some kind of weight of this sample okay so this is just the weight the weight of the samples that you are kind of uh, trying to take out and these are your parameters that you are kind of sampling so these are your samples and these will correspond to 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 try to obtain these these parameters over here right because the, the thing is like, uh, it will be really hard to try to find some analytical form or closed form to predict these these folks over here. So instead you just go and, and try to do true sampling. So you predict some samples uh, of these um, of these parameters and then you use those samples to, to obtain uh, an estimate of your, of your posterior over here. Um, some techniques to do those samples, either you do some for uh, for grid, for instance, so you sample in a, in a grid and a square grid. The problem is that that doesn't work if you have high dimensional spaces. Uh, if you have too much, too many parameters, it won't work. But maybe you can do also the central composite design. So you just go plus minus one standard deviation from the mode in each of the dimensions. So you will get uh, for each of those parameters above and below and you just sample from there, okay? Another um, useful way of trying to extend these kernels or these parameters over here is also using the multiple uh, kernel learning. Basically, multiple, multiple kernel uh, learning. So learning, okay, sorry, Lear this is an end. Um, the idea is that you just want to compose these, you have this kernel, and what you want to do is make these this summation of other kernels, so you have some weight to just uh, tune them. And what you want to do is, since this is complex, right? And this is also complex. So maybe you can just define a set of kernels, kj kernels, and then instead of learning the parameters of the k kernels, oh sorry, of the j kernels, you just learn these weights and that will simplify your, your job because now everything is linear with respect of, of these kernels. So uh, this computation over here is, is simpler. 
But yeah, so those are uh, some of the ideas of how can you use these to estimate the parameters. And for sure, it is, it is an interesting thing, but as, as we were talking at the beginning of the, of the course, this is just the, the, the basic stuff. If you want to get deep into this, uh, you have a lot of research and a lot of uh, methods, state-of-the-art methods trying to solve these and try to apply all of these to real problems, okay? And, and to find better solutions to different kind of things. So we will continue talking in the next part about these Gaussian processes and, and different applications, okay? See you then.